this is my Mark II Iron Man suit, and well, it's got a couple of electronics, so uh, let's talk about it. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name's Luke, and in this video I'm going to be talking about all the electronics through my Mark II Iron Man suit. Now there are a fair few electronics, most of them are all motorized with the faceplate, missiles, and a backflap all with motorization, and then the arc reactor itself with a bunch of LEDs. I'm going to be going through in sort of a basic terms, not much on the coding, but mostly on what electronics I use, the boards that I use, the PCBs, and a lot of the wiring that is within this suit. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is the helmet. All right, so the helmet itself. Now, you've probably seen over the internet over so many years, the motorized faceplates where these things open up and down and they're really easy nowadays. So nowadays, so many of the files all come with pre-built uh, electronics with supports and everything, whereas the original versions, like one of my helmets over there, you had to put in the arms itself in the correct motions and the movements, and it was super difficult, and it would take so much longer than it does right now. All you've really got to do is print it, print some arms, shove some servos in, couple of wires, and then screw everything together. It is so much easier now. Now this won't be a whole tutorial on making a motorized helmet. I am going to be making one of those very, very soon once I complete my Mach 47 helmet, uh, which will be later on. But I'm gonna show you how I did this. So this is Welsh 3D's Mark II Iron Man helmet uh, with all of his electronics within here. Now for the servos, which are mounted just up on the top of the Mohawk, are uh, two MG90S servos. These are metal geared servos, which are then just connected to a PCB built in the back. Now, the reason I went with the MG90S servos and so many of these models now do is because they are metal geared, uh, meaning if they're plastic, they're gonna strip out and break over time much quicker than these metal ones. And for the LEDs, they are just cosplay LED eyes. You've seen me use them on a couple other builds. Uh, they're LED sort of flexible panels, which you're able to see through and not really see into. Only problem is when it goes really, really dark, like it's nighttime or you're like in a really dark room, you blind yourself and it sucks. So then down to the chin itself, they, all right. Walsh has just designed a really, really clever mechanism as once this opens, it pushes it down. Don't ask how he does it, he's an engineer, he knows so much more than I do, uh, but it's really clever mechanism. So once it moves down, the thing moves in. And the last little thing is the trigger switch. I get asked this a lot of the time on how do you open it and all this sort of stuff. You can use like magnets in your fingers like a reed switch, but that just includes so much wiring going down your back and through your arm. Or you could do make a Bluetooth module like Plentiful Props does, uh, but I like to do it uh, a little bit easier. Now, this is my Mark 85 helmet. It's really dusty, whoops. Uh, and the limiter switch is just built in here. So you can see it just here in the top where I've just designed a really simple little mechanism uh, which holds the limiter switch in a spot which then I can just click my jaw forward and it activates the helmet to open and close. But there's a slight issue on the Mark II. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Mark II to the Mark VIII uh, all have these movable jaws. Meaning I can put the limiter switch down in the bottom of the jaw here. Once I activate it, it moves further away from my chin, which isn't really a solution. Now, you can see just on the edge right here, on the little platform arm that Walsh has designed in, which is a stationary piece. So the limiter switch is just glued into an angle which can I can hit really well. So all I have to do is just click my jaw sideways and it opens up the helmet. And once the jaw moves down, the bracket is attached to the dome piece, meaning it doesn't move at all, which is a really good solution in managing to open and close these things. And last but not least is the board powering everything in the helmet. I'm just using an Arduino Nano just up the back, running on Crashworks 3D's Iron Man code. Uh, now this is a custom PCB that I built myself, uh, and it's got my name, and it's got my account, and it's got Iron Man references all over the thing, uh, and it's built to fit in this helmet. Now, if you are interested in learning how to make a PCB yourself, uh, it's actually my first YouTube video that I ever made, uh, which I'll leave a link down in the description on how you can make it in Fusion 360, get them manufactured and shipped to your house. So that pretty much does it for the helmet. Really simple, everyone talks about them, everyone sort of knows how to do them nowadays. So next thing is onto the arc reactor. Okay, so this is the arc reactor sort of disassembled. And as you can see, it's actually really, really simple. So you've got the main housing itself, the top housing, and then all the little detail things. Now this is Neo Robotnik's uh, arc reactor, and it fits, the, where's the chest plate? Here, 
I made a custom little ring that makes it mount perfectly into the DO3D uh, chest plate, which was really good because while their arc reactor was okay, I really like Neo Robotnik's just because of how detailed and intricate it is, like you can see. Now, all I've done is made a custom PCB with a nice little arc reactor uh, stencil on the back, and then it's also just powered by an Arduino Nano. The Arduino Nano is then connected to some power, which is this red and black wire there, and then a three pin JST connector powering all the LEDs. So for the LEDs, I've got an 18 ring module and a 16 ring module uh, back to back, which have just been wired up and then a little bit of hot glue so that they don't fall apart. But everything has then just been soldered in and then connected into the board. Now, as for the code on this, I've actually just taken some firework code. So essentially what this firework code is, is that it gives a little bit of a flicker. As you can see, this is sort of transitioning between like a light blue, a red, a purple, and those sorts of colors, uh, giving it like that alive feeling rather than just being one big solid color. Now I got this tip from Plentiful Props uh, and he goes through some of the code. I can't remember which video it is, but it is just a really stock standard one that you can just find on the internet. And then I customize with just the brightness and my LED pixels. But I thought this was a really cool add-on just to give a little bit more flair and a bit more lively to the arc reactor, which is essentially keeping him alive. So the next thing we're onto is our forearm. So onto the missile. So if you haven't seen the missile, which I don't blame you, is a very little new addition, it does something a little like this. Now I designed this uh, using the DO3D files and Mick, who was an incredible help in making this thing work and actually come to life. So I will leave a link down in his Instagram in the description. He's an incredible genius, willing to help absolutely anyone at no cost, and he's an absolute legend for that. Now, the design of this is a little bit similar to Plentiful Props, yet again, but he's an absolute genius, so like, I don't blame him. Um, and then a little bit of my own creation. Now, the whole thing, yet again, is running on MG90S servos. So I've just housed one servo in the side here, another in the side here, both using Walsh 3D's Mark 85 jaw hinge. Now he's got a hinge that makes the, uh, or like a helper arm that helps the jaw move down and then back in. So I just took one of those and then 3D printed it, screwed it in, and then also used the same jaw connector uh, from the chin, which is not over there. I forgot I moved it. Now this same design, I just kind of took the files. You could probably make them, but I just wanted to reutilize something I already knew worked and something I trusted. So both of them are screwed into side panel one and side panel two. The next thing is the missile itself. Now the missile, the housing hub, it's and the arm that's attached to the top of this forearm are all from Plentiful Props. He's got a link uh, over on his YouTube channel where it takes him to this thingy verse where he's actually modeled this himself to fit in Joe Props 3D's uh, Mark, 20 or one of these suits uh, where it fits perfectly, but I did a little bit of customization and made it work for mine. So that just consisted of cutting it and then soldering it in, PLA welding. Then I also added an extra MG90 Servo S up the top so that then I could house and hinge this top plate. The top plate yet again is also motorized using this hinge bracket uh, that then is mounted to the same mounting bracket as both of these arms which are both from Walsh's motorizing jaw in the Mark 85. Now it does sound complicated and does look a little bit complicated, but if to go and watch Pentiful Props video on motorizing one of these forearms, it does break it down a lot more simple. Now, if you just take your time in doing this, you can actually get it really, really solid. I did rush it a little bit, but I think in the end it does work and it does do what I wanted it to do. So just a quick recap, all the panels are separated. I've got two MG90S servos which are connected to the hinges on both side panels. I've then got an extra MG90 servo S on the side here which then activates the missile going in and out. I've then got the MG90S which is sort of hidden up there, it's hard to show, which is the one tilting the top back and forward. And then it's all housed on the same motorization kit as what Plentiful Props has modeled himself uh, that fits other Iron Man suits that then I customized and made into here. 
And then as for all the electronics, yet again, it's an Arduino Nano and a custom PCB. Now, if you are interested in the code for this, I wrote it all myself. Uh, it is a little bit confusing. Um, but if you are interested in that, I'll go over a whole YouTube video on how you can actually make one of these. And then I can also release some of the, uh, uh, what do you call them? The code. But if you are interested in it, just leave a comment down and I'll pass it on for you because that's what we all do in this community is help each other out. So finally, on to the back flap. So let's talk about the back flaps. All right, so for the back flaps, I didn't have to actually modify too many of the files as all of the back flaps for this suit came detached. Now this is do 3D suit, meaning I had to do a lot of the uh, like motorization and positioning a lot myself. Whereas if you pick a suit by Levy or Walsh or Vec, they've already got all of the electronics in the exact same place. So all you have to do is put the servos in and a, like attach the brackets and that's pretty much it. So I did have to do a lot extra. Now for the servos, as you can see, they're mounted one, two, three, and four. They I am running MG995s. Now these are heavy geared metal servos uh, and they can each hold 20 kilos. The problem with using those tiny little MG90S uh, servos is because they're super light, they don't have enough torque strength, meaning that a lot of the time back flaps won't be able to open because of the size, the weight, and that sort of stuff. So all of the servos are built with custom hinges and brackets that I built myself in Fusion 360, and then had modified so that I could PLA weld everything into position once I was happy with it. Now, if you are interested in having these uh, motorization, like, what are these things? Servo mounts. Uh, I'll upload the files up to Thingiverse if you guys are interested uh, so that you guys can modify suits like the DO3D ones. Not as much for the Walsh and the Levy sort of ones, but it's still a really good option if you wanted to add to a suit. So all of the three servos I wired up to have JST connectors so that if a servo dies, I can unplug it and put in the new one. Really simple, really easy without having to strip everything back. So the main board powering everything, you kind of guess it. It's an Arduino Nano, the super powerful, work really well, and it's just built into a custom PCB. So I have in this custom PCB four of the servos, which is one, two, three, four. Then I've also got the two repulsors. Now these repulsors just run down uh, some really long wires down into my forearm. Uh, this is one of my forearms and its connectors. Uh, for the LEDs in the repulsors, I just used eight ring LED modules, which then just are uh, glued into the palm and I turn them on and off. I probably will be customizing this later on, but that'll be in the Mark II upgrades video when I release that. And this is pretty standard. This goes for everyone's suits, really. The eight ring LED modules work perfectly, super bright, really easy to code and work really well with the Crashworks code. As for the power, there's a little bit more problems. So I actually currently have to run a battery pack with two USBs in it to house all of the power just for the back flap. Because these are 20 kilo uh, servos, they draw a lot and a lot, a lot of power. So you have to power them separately to the Arduino board or otherwise you're gonna start tripping it. So I've wired up the positive and negative of all four of these and then connected it to a USB port. Now this is just a positive negative. You can buy these positive negative uh, USB connectors on Amazon or local electronics places, which I would highly recommend doing, because uh, that way then you can plug it straight into a USB port. So one of these wires connects to all the power while the signals from all of these servos go within the brains of the board. The board itself is powered on the other USB cable. So that one's my Arduino, that one's my back flaps. Uh, and this way I can run the Arduino and all of its codes with the lights and some of the sounds, which will be coming soon. And then I can power all the limmer switches off it like so. Uh, so make sure when you're doing these back flaps that there is, excuse me, but so when, so when you do these back flaps, do make sure that you are checking the power often. If they are using the MG90S servos, uh, you should be able to get away with it being plugged right into the brains of the board. But if not, and you're using these ones, I'd highly recommend putting them separately so you don't trip anything and cause into problems later. So that's pretty much it for the motherboard on the Arduino. So for all the LEDs, you could, yes, run them off an Arduino, but I also want to show the capabilities of this board, which is a Cosvox. Cosvox has been a very early supporter in my channel. Uh, in me building all of this stuff, they reached out to me when I made my Mark, 80, my Mark II, Mark II Iron Man helmet. And it's an incredible board with uh, sound modules and capabilities, all those sorts of crazy things, which I'll be talking about when there may or may not be something new coming. 
Uh, and the great thing with this is that it controls lights and sounds. So I can have sound effect modules built into the boards as well. And at the same time as having sound effects, I can have LEDs. Now the LEDs housed within the back are just, you can kind of see them under there. This is really difficult to hold. I am just using LED filament. LED filament is just like really thin, flexible wires, meaning I was able to curve them around the back and they are not codable, meaning they're really easy to just sort of plug in and play, just connect them to power, nothing else fancy. And then they're just housed straight into the Cosvox, which is then powered by AAA batteries. I just ended up going with some red and some blue just to give a bit of contrast, because I mean, when you get shots like this that are with these LEDs, like it kind of, kind of makes it cool. And that's pretty much it for those LEDs. There's no real sound features into the Cosvox or the Arduino as of yet, but they will be coming for the missiles, the helmet, and the legs. So that's pretty much it for the back. It does look really confusing just because there's so many wires from each servo coming into the board and then going out of the board and then down to these forearms and the missiles, but really there's not too much involved. So that's pretty much it for the back flaps and pretty much it for the suit. So that is pretty much it for this video. Uh, I'm, I do apologize if it is a little bit confusing here and there, but I just wanted to show what electronics I was using and so those boards. But if you are interested in any of these, in making the helmet, making the missile, or doing the back flaps, or something to do with the arc reactor, please leave a comment down in the description. I'll be more than happy to make an entire video dedicated just to making them and integrating them into suits and all that sort of stuff. I will be doing a helmet motorization tutorial myself uh, with my Mark 47 helmet and a couple other helmets here and there. But if you are interested, please do leave a, uh, a comment. Uh, I will make one specifically for you, 100%. So that's pretty much it, like I said, for this video. I will see you all next week. Next week's build is going to be something silicon related with a clone trooper, which will be a three part series, which I'm very excited to share and talk about uh, because I'm kind of now addicted to silicon and mold making and that sort of fun stuff. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all next week.